All right, let's continue our discussion. The second part of this feeling of inferiority and anxiety when you see another male comes from this idea of that, um, what we talked about, the movies and the characters that they've created, and most of those characters who are powerful or villain or whatever, they get things done through brute force, they're ugly. Uh, whether they're big or small, but they're ugly. And so, because most men are actually ugly, not good looking, you have this inferiority feeling towards not just that male that you see, you see that male as a representation of a group. So when you see one male who's ugly or another male, because you're good looking, you compare yourself with the others and you see that they're not you know, as good looking as you are. So automatically, because of the background and the mind in the movies that strong people are ugly, then you feel inferior because you're convinced that because that person is not as good looking as you are and you are good looking, therefore that person has got more power. And because most guys are ugly, that means that person is not one person that you feel inferior. You're feeling inferior to a group of people because that person fits into a group, a group of mostly ugly men. And the movies have presented that ugly men are powerful. So you're going against this background and supposedly you are supposed to come into this comparison at a disadvantage by the conditionings that you've received through the media and through the movies and all that, that you're not, compared to an ugly guy, you're not powerful. When that happens in your mind, you simply start thinking that, okay, that means Ugly men that, as it portrays in the movies, are more manly. Which means, because you're good looking, you're not preconditioned in your mind uh, through what's how propaganda has worked out out there, that you are manly enough. Now, you got to prove that you're man, that you're manly. So that already puts you at a disadvantage when you see another male who is not good looking as you are, and it feels ra inferior right away because now you feel like I got to prove my manliness because I'm privileged because maybe I had a good life, maybe I had good parents, maybe I was raised well, maybe you know I'm good looking. Uh, so that makes you feel like you're supposed to be sorry that you've been privileged. You, you're supposed to be sorry that you're good looking. You're supposed to have that inward energy pulling in the energy rather than extending energy outward, outward uh, towards your life but because you feel guilty you in the society we've been kind of conditioned to feel guilty um, unfortunately you know uh, through misunderstanding of the intention of the world which is to bring equality and balance toward all kinds of people but it's been done so much that it's gone to the point that if you're good looking, if you're happy, if you're privileged, if you got, you know, good family or good things happening for you, you're supposed to feel sorry about that. So when you have come across a man who is not, you know, who is fitting the, uh, what we're talking about, ugly, then it represents a group of ugly and then therefore it represents more manly because they're not good looking so so to speak then that puts you in a inferiority mode trying to prove yourself which already makes you feel pulling energy in rather than extending energy forward and that is why you feel kind of inwardly feel like oh, um, I feel anxiety because I don't feel like I'm manly enough because you've been preconditioned to think that way and all these other things that we talked about it have something to do with it. Now, when you bow out in this way because of these processes and these conditionings that we've received, when you bow out and think that you have to prove your manliness, well, obviously you feel inferior. And when you feel inferior, you associate that with domination and the negative mind runs with it, the inferiority and domination runs with it and goes through all kinds of tangents of intrusive thoughts and creates notions of 
sexual images, um, submission, and all these things stemming from that illusory suggestion that good-looking men are not as powerful or manly as not good-looking men and ugly men, which is an illusory thing created by the movies, but it has a place from childhood, just because you were good-looking, you always felt like that you don't fit others because most other kids were not good-looking. And the older you got, you saw there are more ugly guys out there and you're not one of them, therefore you won't feel fitting in because they all have something in common, they're ugly. And then good-looking guys don't necessarily fit in a group, they're, they don't have a group, they're scattered around, they're, you know, it's not like a, a club of something. Therefore, you already have been raised with that mentality of that, I'm not as manly as the ugly kids. So when you grow up and you're hit with the HOCD, that plays a big role when you see what you see as somebody, another male out there, and you go through these processes and you kind of bow out, then you feel submissive, uh, you feel uh, uncomfortable, you feel anxiety, you feel less powerful, you feel less manly, and therefore, naturally, the negative mind being even more negative and intrusive right now because of the HOCD glitch that you might be in, runs with it, with the sexual images and thoughts, which is, that's what it does because it can, it can. The brain does all kind of weird uh, thoughts and images and it creates that sort of thing. And now, uh, let me see if I've missed anything here. And of course, this whole business of intrusive images and so on, is because a human being interacts with life uh, through his sexuality. Uh, dogs interact with life through touching in a way of by their mouth, biting anything, or smelling. And we seem to be interpreting everything according to we want to be the top dog, the alpha male, and that means what? That means sex. So anything you see, anything you deal with in life, is really got a connotation of sex. You see another male, you compare yourself, you compare what part, you compare yourself and your sexual uh, ability, that you, who's better with the girls, and you make that comparison. And everything that you do has a sexual connotation. Should the negative mind in such modes of HOCD glitches, on top of the fact that everybody in the world has intrusive thoughts, when you have HOCD, you got a lot more intrusive thoughts, so it runs with it and creates all these uncomfortable and nasty and um, intrusive thoughts, which makes you wonder why is it. And one of the reasons, beside and in addition to what we talked about, is because we as a human being, uh, spe specifically perhaps you who is watching this, have, an, have a violent mind. Like we are, as a species, we're violent people. So when the brain gets into the glitch of intrusive thoughts, because of the violent nature of human being, it creates all kinds of intrusive, nasty, disgusting, violent nature in sexuality, which it really becomes exhausting for the person who's going through this glitch. But all of that is just what the brain is doing by creating thoughts of that nature, it's got nothing to do with you. This is the malfunction of the brain, not the malfunction of you. You have to understand the brain is an organ, creates thoughts, and based on what we talked about and the uh, malfunction of the signaling system uh, between uh, prefrontal cortex and caudate nucleus and, and the amygdala and thalamus, all these are involved and the signaling system is malfunctioning. So the intrusive thoughts are not shutting down automatically as they always have. Now they're in a glitch of OCD or malfunctioning and then the rest of it, which brings the HOCD, makes this whole thing seems like you're changing or you really are interested in someone or you have a homosexual interaction or thoughts or uh, inclination. None of that is true. It's all conjuring up of the brain, which has gone malfunctioning and creates thoughts. That's his job. It creates thoughts, you know, 24-7, 80, 90,000 a day. And none of them, you know, when you're not in a OCD or HOCD glitch, 
You won't even notice. You just say, oh, that was a shitty thought, and you move on. But because the carotid nucleus is not working well, it doesn't shut down the intrusive thoughts automatically, then it lingers in there. When it lingers, you say, oh, it must be me. It must have something to do with who I am. No, it's got nothing to do with who you are. It's got something to do with the brain's malfunction, and the brain is responsible for these thoughts, not you. It's the brain who is doing these thoughts. It's the brain who's malfunctioning. It's the brain who's causing, conjuring up these images and thoughts, not you, because you're not thoughts. Thought is not you, you're not the brain, and brain is not you. So remember this until next we talk about the next section of the roots of HOCD. Talk to you soon.